As many of you know, I'm, I'm an exercise physiologist by, by training and by, by schooling, I guess. And uh, when I was just finishing up my doctorate um, at the University of Colorado in physiology, um, I felt really, really proud of all of the, the science that I knew, um, of all of the knowledge that, that I had in my head. I could, you know, literally recite uh, metabolic pathways, um, you know, in my sleep. And uh, I was really excited to get out there and, and work in the quote unquote real world. Um, and when I got in the real world, uh, one of my first experiences, and this was literally about one month after I had, had graduated from CU, um, I got hired by, by an athlete, um, Floyd Landis, who many of you know. Um, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> um, but I remember showing, showing up uh, my very, very first night in Spain in this foreign country, totally new world, um, and getting to Floyd's apartment that evening, totally jet lagged. And it was around dinner time, and he starts to go and make dinner. And as he starts to make dinner, I realized that dinner is basically a bowl of cereal that he's pouring into, you know, this big old bowl. And I look over at him and I realize, and I say to him, I'm like, is, is, that, is that dinner tonight? And he just kind of looked at me and said, yeah, this is, this is dinner. And at that point I realized that no amount of, of, of metabolism was going to help me here. <laughs> so um, I dragged Floyd down to the, the supermarket and we did a whole load of shopping. Um, and we cooked a really simple meal of literally spaghetti and bolognese sauce that evening, right? Um, and what I started to realize working in the field was that there's this big disconnect between science and practice, right? We can break down all of our food into carbohydrates, fats, proteins. We can read the latest scientific article about why this food is great or why this antioxidant is better than that other antioxidant. But what I realized working in the field, working with athletes on the road, was that that wasn't the rate limiting factor. The rate limiting factor was actually getting these athletes into the kitchen and teaching them the skills to take care of themselves, to actually cook real food and real meals on a daily basis, and to put the same amount of dedication and time into their cooking and into their nutrition that they did into their training. You know, for, for me, the bottom line is that being an elite athlete, being a pro athlete, even just trying to be healthy in our own lives is, is not easy work. It, it's hard, it's difficult, it's challenging. You know, we're, we're all faced with a limited amount of time, we're all faced with our own challenges and our own stressors, right? But I think the reason why we love sport is because it isn't easy, because it is hard. And, you know, all the reasons that, 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 that we admire athletes, the dedication, the discipline, while we often relate that to training and to the sacrifices they make when they're on the bicycle, I think that the real sacrifice is what they do off the bicycle. And the real work is not what happens, you know, the three or, or five hours that they're on the road, it's what, they, what happens in between. And what I realized, for the most part, being, being out there, was that there was this big bottleneck when it came to, to good food, when it came to nutrition, when it came to basic cooking skills. There was also a big gap with respect to me actually executing great meals when we were at races like the Tour de France, right? Um, you know, translating all of my scientific knowledge about what I wanted the guys to eat into an actual recipe. So, when we came about thinking about this book and thinking about nutrition and thinking about sports performance, I realized that what I didn't want to do was write another theoretical dissertation about nutrition. What I wanted to do was write a book with a bunch of recipes, right? Write a book where instead of telling a guy that he needed to have 60% carbohydrate tonight, you know, and 20% and protein and 20% fat, that he could cook what's on page 74, right? <laughs> um, for me, being as practical as I, as I am, that was uh, a, a better solution, a, a better answer. Um, at the same time, there was this, this, this realization that you know, a lot of the sports nutrition that we're often marketed and we're often sold, that is put in packages, that everyone thinks the athletes are eating, um, that, that that's the norm. Well, I can tell you that that's really not the norm. And it's not like these athletes are Robocop and all you're doing is just putting the, the goo inside of them, right? Um, so, you know, this, this book is really a reflection of, of uh, all of the lessons that we learned in the real world, uh, it's a reflection of a, of a typical uh, team meal. And with respect to that typical team meal, um, 
a, a couple of stages here in terms of what you guys are, are eating or experiencing. Uh, one of the first things was, was is the rice cakes. And uh, what, what I learned early on is that all the prepackaged you know, energy bars and the, the goos and the, the gels and all that kind of stuff was making the athletes sick. Um, but I realized that when they ate real food, that they didn't have a bad stomach, that, that, that they actually wanted to eat more. So one of the first recipes that I actually started making for the guys were these simple rice cakes. All they are are basically sushi rice mixed with some eggs, mixed with some soy sauce, a little bit of vinegar, and some bacon. Uh, which I know for a lot of people might, might be kind of uh, criminal, but for guys racing on the road, it actually really works.